John, last weekend, last Saturday, I was in attendance at a at an event which was held out the front of the Russian consulate here in Sydney. It's on Fullerton Street in Wallara in Sydney's eastern suburbs. This was a gathering in relation to the fellow commonly known as the Aussie Cossack. His name is Simeon Boykov. He has actually been holed up residing inside the Russian consulate for more than a year now over his political activism. And this to me has parallels with uh, the ongoing saga in relation to Julian Assange, whose court case is currently ongoing because there are people trying to extradite him to the United States. Can you give us your view on, on these issues of what's happening to these people? I mean, Assange is obviously a much more high-profile person internationally than the Cossack, but there are some parallels there. Oh, very parallel, because we are, what you call, whistle, whistleblowers. We say something wrong, we uh, want to alert people to what is wrong so in order to put it right. So Julian Assange is a whistleblower, there's a, he printed about American crimes and so forth. Uh, but no matter who, whether it's Julian Assange or Ozzy Cossack or myself or any whistleblower, uh, we have the protections of the law and the, we have the protection in the courts. So there's any issues whatsoever, you have your protests and so forth, but you, you really sort the whole thing out because courts are government. This is where we govern it, in the courts. So these courts have, have got to be just courts. And so all these issues have got to be brought into court. Because Julian Assange has not seen a court because a court is a, is a judge and a jury with the jury deciding the facts and the law. But they won't allow that. He's been imprisoned unlawfully because he hasn't been imprisoned by a jury, he's been imprisoned by a magistrate. And, and the, a magistrate or a judge has got no jurisdiction unless you, unless you give your consent. So it's the same with uh, Julian Assange. He's in Melbourne's prison. And I said, all you've got to do is issue a writ of habeas corpus. Habeas corpus is based upon Magna Carta. And so deliver the body from the custody and bring him into the court. But that's got to be a a genuine court, a proper court, common law court. But uh, hey, so the issue of the habeas corpus must come first, and then when he gets, so, so the the governor drives him to the courthouse, and Julian Sands says, "Okay, uh, where's my jury? I demand trial by jury on all these issues, but they don't allow it." And so, as soon as they deny him trial by jury, then he should challenge the jurisdiction of the court. And that is a legal procedure where a jury decide if you got the right to trial by jury. It's all made to Carter, and they don't want that either. So Julian Assange, number one, has got to have a written habeas corpus. Yes. And he's got to know uh, of how to challenge in the courts. But uh, he's got these uh, Mickey Mouse lawyers who are not doing it. So uh, I'm very sort of a bit on the nose about his lawyers because he. It's a simple procedure. Rid of habeas corpus being around. You see it on American TV all the time. Oh, rid of habeas corpus, get people out of jail and, until they put the trial. But the, the trial is going to be a proper court. And the same with Julian Assange. He's been uh, outlawed and, and they try to exile him. In fact, Magna Carta says no free man shall be taken uh, and deemed in prison or exiled or outlawed. And that's what they're, they're doing to him. No trial by jury. And it's totally 100% uh, unlawful. He should be out of jail just like that. But they, they, nobody's been told about habeas corpus and challenging jurisdiction, those two things. That will get him out of jail in, in half an hour. It, it is a very interesting case, the whole Julian Assange saga. Yep. It's something that, unfortunately for him, has been going on for many years. And truth be told, He's a person who has never told a lie. There, there was no, as far as I'm aware, there were certainly no lies or fabrications no. Or, or propaganda or anything of that nature in the things that he has done, the information that he's released, the yeah. statements that he has made. Well, that's what I say. The fundamentals of, of uh, a, a conviction 
is number one, you've got to have t two elements. You, you've got to have the actual act of being done, so fair enough, he published these reports, but then you've got to have the guilty mind, the wrongful mind, the evil intent. So unless you have that second element, see, there is no conviction, there is no offence. So all you've got to do is, is present his case to his, his equals, who are competent and impartial, and just justify why he did it. Because he, if he, he proves to the jury that he hasn't got a guilty mind, then he's no conviction. And that would apply even if he got to America. Uh, so, I don't know. The court is, can only convict if both those elements are satisfied, the actual doing of it and the actual guilty or evil mind, malintent. Do you therefore think that his legal counsel, his legal representatives, have uh, failed him? Oh, double-crossed him. Oh, I guess I get angry. I get angry. I can understand that. I, I really can. It would seem as though it's quite possible that his legal counsel, his lawyers, his legal representatives, are actually working against his best interests. Absolutely. And they, I wish I was in London. Yes. I wish I was in front of the, the Royal Courts of Justice and, so, and giving out examples of habeas corpus and teach the educate the ordinary people. They're protesting, uh, but they don't know how to go about it. Teach them the law. Uh, teach them there is a Manly Carta. Teach them there is habeas corpus. Teach them there is challenging jurisdiction. And we have the, uh, the inalienable right to trial by jury. And that's what's not happening to Julian Assange. And, uh, uh, I just wish I was over there.